Imagine for a moment that you're rich. Now, not like I'm rich enough and I've got Social Security and money saved up for retirement and I can stay in my house and eat stuff besides ramen noodles rich. I hope we're all going to be that rich, right? But like properly rich, like Jeff Bezos rich. We know who he is, right? He's the guy who owns Amazon and the Washington Post and like everything else. He's so rich that when he got divorced, he gave his ex-wife half his money and he still was like the third richest guy alive. So imagine you were that kind of rich. Jeff Bezos from Amazon rich. And you're so rich that you have to hire people to help you count and manage your money. Now that's kind of a nice problem to have, isn't it? Yes. I had a friend in college, and when I asked him, I said, Nate, what does your dad do for a living? He said, well, he manages our family's portfolios. I said, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got a 401k, he's got a worry about, but what does he do to make money? He says, no, 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 that's what he does. He just manages our family's wealth. You see, somewhere along the line, one of his grandfathers, was the second son to Spanish nobility, and so the king and queen of Spain gave him a bunch of land in Florida, and they made a pretty good run at it. Mm -hmm. oh, you really do just sit around with money managers and manage the money. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So imagine you're that kind of rich, and you hire all these managers to help you get even richer. But you find out that one of them has been letting out apartments that you run and own to people. Now, Julie can help us with this. She knows about renting out stuff, doesn't she? Now, imagine that some of your tenants are always late with the rent and never pay their late fees. Sometimes they don't even pay their rent. Now, have you ever had tenants like that? We have a few right now just like that, right? Every month there's someone, right? Now imagine though, your manager isn't even trying to collect that money from them. They're just kind of okay with this. Do you get angry at that manager? You don't get angry at them? You like them just giving away all your money? I mean, I want to hire them because I want to be greedy for more money. <coughs> You wouldn't even hire them. I want to come and enjoy your piggy bank with you at some point. You should be talking because it's stewardship season. Don't be greedy. Fill out your cards. But think about it. Most of us wouldn't hire a manager like that, would we? And if we did and we caught them, we'd want to fire them. But then the manager, it's even worse, says, all right, how much rent do you owe? We're about $8,000 behind. It's kind of a lot. Quick, sit down, let's make it three. Now, as the tenant, I like this manager, right? I mean, if Wells Fargo came to me and said, hey, why don't we just call your mortgage good if you can give us $5,000? I would take that deal, I think, right? But the owner, the Jeff Bezos guy, kind of like you, Colin, says, you're a really good manager. I'm glad I hired you to do that. You should be blessed because you're so shrewd with stuff. Now, does that sound like any boss you've ever had in your life? Like, that's not the way it works with bosses, is it? So why would the manager be praised for giving away the owner's money? makes no sense if you think about it. You hire a manager so that you can get richer, not so that they can give away your cash. That's not the way it works, right? Imagine Mr. Wright. Does he like it when people don't pay their rent? Not really, right? Imagine if they just cut everyone's rent. Would he like that? Not so much, right? That's the way it works. Jesus is that shrewd manager, sent by the Father 
to forgive your debts. Now think about it. How many of you can honestly say that you are here today because of yourself? So there's this biology thing that happens. You take two 23 chromosome cells, and Mike's a doctor, so I'm afraid to go too far into this because I'll probably jam up the science. But you take two 23 chromosome cells, you magically put them together, talk to your parents if you're questioning how that works, and later comes a baby. That's basically right, isn't it, Mike? More or less. So none of you made yourselves, did you? It was those two 23 chromosome cells coming together. And your parents didn't make themselves, and their parents didn't make them, and on back, till someone, we called him God, decided that this creation thing was worth having. Or how many of you can honestly say that it is only for your own agency and power that you were able to get up this morning, take a shower, put on respectable clothing, and drive here? Isn't it a gift that you're intelligent enough not to just sit there and drool into a bowl of Cheerios, but instead get showered, put on some reasonable looking clothes, and drive yourself here? There's nothing you have done that's made yourself that intelligent, is there? But you really start to think about it. It is so gifted, the fact that we can read, or write, or drive, or shower, or walk, are all of these things that we can do, and that we do do. But don't we run up the bill with God? Don't we run up the debt? When we do stuff we know God doesn't like. I mean, do any of you think that you don't do stuff that God doesn't like? Because if you do, you should totally come see me this week, and we should take a really detailed look at your life. Because I'm suspicious that there are some areas where you do, in fact, sin. Right? We can never pay God back for what he has done. And so, the Father sends the Son, Jesus Christ, as the shrewd manager to forgive our debts. But why would a manager do that? Why would an owner do that? In the Roman Empire, they would forgive debts like that because they realized they had a couple of options. You could take the guy who was leasing land from you and farming it, and you could sell all of his equipment and his seed stock. You know what would happen? You'd get your money paid back for that one season. You know what would happen the next season with no equipment and no seeds? Well, he couldn't plant anything because he didn't have any seeds, and he couldn't prepare the ground. So that'd be the end of it. You would just be losing money out into the future. So they would forgive the debts of people or reduce them to a level they could be paid so that there could be a way back. It really kind of is like Jeff Bezos. Are any of you like me old enough to remember buying books from Amazon in the late 90s or early 2000s? Back in the good old days, dial-up internet. No one was cheaper for books than Jeff Bezos and Amazon then, were they? Not Barnes & Noble, not Books A Million, which I don't think even exists anymore, not Borders. Not even Sam's Club was cheaper than Amazon. And what's more, Amazon and Jeff Bezos would mail it to you and have it there in under a week. Did they make money selling those books in the late 90s? No. For years, Amazon lost money. Like just quarter after quarter, burning through cash. Why did they do it? Because they knew something better was coming. So much better that you could give away half your money and still be the third richest person alive. See, God the Father sent the prophets 
and the people couldn't pay their debt. He sent the flood, and the people couldn't pay their debts. He sent the judges and the kings, and the people couldn't pay their debt. So he sends his son, the shrewd manager, to start canceling debts so that you can come back to friendship with God. Won't you accept this debt cancellation program? Amen.